So many people are used to paying for things on cards. So much finance is now done without any cash actually switching hands. What's the difference between central bank issued digital currencies and currencies that are transferring between people without anybody actually handing over cash? Sure. So money, as we think about it, um, is probably 95, uh, 95% uh, digital anyway. And as an, as an individual um, or as a company, the only interaction you have with real money, with real central bank money, is physical. It's, it's the banknotes. Um, all other forms of money that you, that you hold um, uh, in, the, in the digital format are, are, are deposits with a commercial bank. So what we're talking about here is a digital version of the banknotes in your pocket. How much of a game changer actually is that? Um, it depends on the technology that's going to be used and it depends on the access to this kind of new money. So um, right now only certain banks called clearing banks um, can have access to, the cent to, to real central bank money. Um, now with central bank digital currencies the idea is that you can broaden that access um, and you can have potentially corporates having access to the central bank and maybe even people, the public, uh, the woman in the street, having digital access to the central bank. Um, if we can get to that stage, so a broad CBDC, a broad central bank digital currency, this can really be a game changer. What is actually going to be the benefit to the consumer? So depending on what entity you are, you, you, you think about this new form of money in, in, in different ways. And, and sometimes the pros to, to one consumer group are the cons to another one. Mm. So for example, um, as, a, as a commercial bank, you may feel slightly uncomfortable that a new form of digital money comes along to compete with deposits. However, that's, that's the downside for the commercial banks. But the upside for the commercial banks is there are possibly new revenue opportunities to be, um, to be had. Who's going to manage the accounts? Who's going to pick up the phone? Um, who's gonna, there's, there's potentially an opportunity to take commissions when converting between deposits and central bank digital currencies. Um, if you think from the fintech's perspective, um, there's a possibility that, that fintech companies, that the new entrepreneurial companies, have a new set of rails on which to hook into um, to, to provide services to consumers. Um, right now, fintechs, I, I think, struggle um, with withholding money because they have to use banks which use old rails. Mm. Here we're talking about entirely new set of rails um, which if done right fintechs can, can use as opposed to using the banking uh, correspondent network. It seems like it's the commercial banks that are really driving this forward at the moment. Um, what do you think is in it for the commercial banks at this stage? Commercial banks uh, are, are looking at this for a different reason. They're, they want to um, figure out if there are ways of, of cutting costs and reducing risks and making the cross-border transactions for them and for their clients uh, m uh, faster and more seamless um, with less operational risk. Distributed ledger technology or blockchain technology as a whole um, could fundamentally change how uh, financial services companies interact with each other um, and make them much, much less operationally risky than they are today.